Mansour Schumann is a Calgary man who stayed behind in Gaza after his family left. And he joins us now live to talk about the current situation there. Mansour, it's good to have you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. So I want to talk about the current situation there, but I first want to get, you know, your story and why you decided to stay where you are while the rest of your family uh, was finally able to get out of Gaza. Can you tell me what, what happened there and why your decision was to stay? Of course, uh, this made this decision was made collectively together with my family uh, many days back. Um, uh, yesterday at 12.50 a.m., we got an email confirming that my name, my wife's name, and my five children's name were on the approved list uh, if we wanted to leave from Gaza to uh, to Egypt through the Rafah border. Um, uh, my family have safely made it through, and they are now in a hotel in Cairo. Uh, why I, I stay behind? Um, for two reasons. The first is to continue the work that we are doing here in terms of trying to continue reaching out to the public outside of Gaza in the English language through TV channels like yourself, explaining to them the humanitarian crisis that's happening to 2.3 million civilians here. In addition to that, um, as the head of the household, you know, as a Palestinian who is originally from Jerusalem, and my ancestors were forced out in 1948 and 1967 from our lands by the, by, by the occupation forces. We don't want this history to repeat itself again here in Gaza. We don't want us to be forced to leave Gaza to the Egyptian peninsula, Sinai Peninsula. So my family, yes, they have left, but it's a temporary leave and inshallah they should come back again. And yeah, let's just talk a little more about your family. First of all, we do have a picture of you with your family. Um, and it's good news that I, I guess you have heard that they are safe in Cairo now. Can you tell me what you've heard from your family? Yes, um, for the first time in weeks, they've had a hot shower. Uh, they've had a good meal. Uh, they've had a very nice breakfast. Uh, the Canadian consular officials were extremely helpful, extremely nice, uh, receiving them at the Egyptian border and helping them secure accommodation for the next three days in Cairo uh, while we plan for our next steps. Uh, they've been very busy talking to many media outlets as well who have approached them, trying to understand their story um, uh, and, and what's been happening to the, to the civilians here in Gaza. Uh, they're also very, they, they, their heart bleeds for leaving behind friends and family uh, here in Gaza as well. Uh, they want the borders to open for everyone and to allow thousands of aid trucks waiting at the border to help the people that are in starvation mode right now. Yeah, and let's talk a little more about that, Monster, because as you say, you know, you're, you're from Jerusalem, but you have ties to uh, Western Canada as well. You worked over here for quite some time. So with that kind of background that you have, I know you felt you would be a good person to stay behind and, and tell the world what's happening where you are. Um, what kinds of things are you seeing right now where you are? Yeah, uh, I, I, I have actually lived in Kingston, Ontario uh, as well. I, I did my engineering degree uh, in Queen's University. Um, I also lived, like you said, in Western Canada, in Calgary for six, seven years. Um, I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of family members there. Uh, we helped build the community in a lot of ways. Um, I'm a proud Canadian. Um, hopefully, Canada will continue uh, to be a peacemaker in the region to try to make a ceasefire here. Uh, what I'm seeing around me is um, since 33 days, the Israelis said that these are 2.3 million animals. And a lot of propaganda has come out saying that, that you know, we're all terrorists, that we're like ISIS, that we decapitate babies' heads, that we rape women. And uh, for the first week, this was what was um, all over the media. So people like myself uh, basically volunteered to try to, give, to tell the story in the English language to people living out there saying, hey, this is what's actually happening. Right now, 11,000 civilians have been killed, over 25,000 injured, thousands under the rubber. 70% of the infrastructure has been destroyed. There is, no, there is no electricity, there is no fuel, there is no clean water. Food hasn't been replenished in, in Gaza since 33 days, and we rely on imports. Uh, communication has been cut out several times, and we can barely find a connection here. Uh, people right now are traveling in horse carts. Cars aren't running anymore in Gaza. Uh, people stand in bakery lines for six to seven hours. Today, I met an elderly woman who said that seven women in front of her fainted while waiting for their bread. So, uh, 
uh, things, things are really going out of control here. And people are wondering, where is democracy? Where is the human rights values? Where is the Geneva Convention? Where is the UN? Why isn't anyone doing anything to stop what's going on here? And Mansour, with the Rafah border crossing once again closed today and many Canadians still stuck in Gaza, I mean, what would you like to see done? You, you say, why is nothing being done by the UN, by other countries? What would you like to see done? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank the, the public, the people on the ground, the people who understand what the Palestinians are going through and empathize with them and have been demonstrating in the millions all over the world asking for the Palestinian the occupation to stop, ask, asking for the Zionist airstrikes, killing civilians to stop, lobbying the politicians to do the right thing, uh, helping in whatever way they can. Uh, my call is upon the elected officials, upon the superpowers of this world. I mean, do you think that this, uh, this problem is only for Gaza or for or Israel? If, if, this isn't, if this doesn't come under control, this might grow in terms of geography. And it will affect economies. It will affect the macro politics in this world. So please try to find a solution to make a ceasefire as soon as possible. Try to find a solution to free hostages on both sides. Try to find solutions to create a humanitarian corridor for fuel, for food, to get to the trapped people inside of Gaza. There are thousands of trucks waiting at the border, waiting to enter. Open the borders. There are thousands of injured who need operations outside, allow them to leave. This has nothing to do with Hamas. This has to do with 2.3 million civilians here that are living in medieval conditions right now. Mansour, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you, and stay safe where you are. Thank you very much for your time.